Here is a fantastic development board that's perfect if you're new to ESP32 programming or if you simply want to get your projects up and running quickly. The GC4827W543 is an all-in-one board featuring a large display, audio amplifier, SD card reader, and extra connectors for accessing additional pins. Forget spending hours on complicated wiring and debugging. At this low price, this board lets you skip straight to the exciting part, creating your projects. In this video, I'm going to walk you step by step through setting up and using every feature on this amazing board. This board is powered by an ESP32 S3 with 8MB of PS RAM. With the integrated SD card slot and touchscreen, I can choose to play different animated GIF on this Color 4 display. And there's even a built-in audio amplifier. I can even play AVI files with sound. Later in this tutorial, I'll show you exactly how to load and play your own AVI videos. You can even build your own internet radio app and stream live radio stations right on this board. I'll show you how to do that using LVGL version 9 along with fully prepared example code. This board truly simplifies and accelerates your project development, whether you're a beginner or just eager to skip complicated wiring. So if you're ready, here's exactly what we'll cover next. First, We'll get your board set up and running quickly with a simple Wi-Fi analyzer app. Next, I'll show you how to display animated GIFs stored on your SD card. Then we'll move on to playing AVI video files with audio, also from the SD card. After that, we'll configure LVGL version 9 through an easy to follow example sketch. And finally, you'll learn how to build your own live internet radio app using LVGL. Let's start with the Wi-Fi Analyzer app to quickly test the board. You get the code on my GitHub repository. The link is right below in the video description. Click here to download the code as a zip file. It's going to be copied in your download folder. Extract the content and remove the dash main part in the folder name. Because the folder name and sketch name must be the same. Open the folder and double click on the sketch to fire up the Arduino IDE. Next, use a good quality USB-C cable, connect it to your computer, and connect the other end to the board. In the board manager, search ESP32 and make sure you are using version 3.2.0 from Espressif. I tested my cone on this version. If you don't see ESP32 by Espressif, go to File then Preferences and paste this URL in this box. I have included this URL in the video description. Click OK and you should see the ESP32 boards by Espressif. The board is detected as ESP32 family device by the IDE. In this menu, choose Select Other Board and Port and search for the ESP32 S3 Dev module as the board type. And select your port. Now let's quickly set the essential board configuration. Set Use CDC on boot to enabled. Flash mode must be set to DIO 80 MHz. Set the partition scheme to UJAP. Enable the PSRAM by selecting OPI PSRAM. And you can leave the other settings as they are. Change just the one highlighted here. We need now to install two libraries. Go to the library manager and search for dev device pins and install version 0.0.2. I have tested my code with this version. Finally, we need to install the GFX library for Arduino, which is the GFX library already optimized for this board. Go to the library manager and search for GFX library for Arduino and version 1.5.6 and install it. Now we are ready to compile and upload the code by clicking this arrow. It may take a while to compile so be patient. If you get a compilation error, double check your libraries and board versions against mine. Revisit this chapter if needed or open an issue on my GitHub repository. I'm always happy to help. Once uploaded, your Wi-Fi analyzer app will start immediately, confirming your board and display are working perfectly. If you're finding this video helpful, make sure to hit that like button. It really helps the channel. And if you want more ESP32 tutorials and projects like this one, 
don't forget to subscribe. Now let's move on to using the touchscreen and the SD card with an animated GIF project. You'll find the link to download this project in the video description. As we did before, download the code onto your computer. Extract the zip file and rename the folder by removing the dash main part. Open the folder and double click on the sketch file to open the Arduino IDE. Set the board type again to ESP32S3 dev module. And just like in the previous project, adjust the configuration settings exactly as shown here on the screen. We've already installed the device pins library and the GFX library for Arduino. For this particular project, we'll add two more libraries. Open the library manager and search for animated GIF by Larry Bank and install version 2.2.0. Next, search for the touch controller library named TAMC and install version 1.0.2. Now let's prepare the micro SD card to store your animated GIF files. I'm using a 30 GB card for this tutorial and it's important to format it Property. I recommend using the SD card formatter application for this, which you can download from the link I've provided in the video description. Make sure the SD card is formatted as FAT32. Inside the downloaded project, you'll find a folder called SD Content containing a GIF folder with pre made GIF animation specially sized at 480 by 272 pixels, the exact resolution of the board's display. I've created these to showcase your board nicely. So just copy this entire GIF folder directly onto your formatted SD card. Once done, safely eject the card and carefully insert it into the SD card slot of your board. Back to the Arduino IDE. All that's left to do is click the upload button. Again, be patient as this may take a moment. If you encounter compilation errors, carefully double check your library's version and board configuration or revisit this chapter if needed. The code is optimized to copy and play the GIF from the PS RAM for smoother playback whenever the GIF size permits. Otherwise, it will play directly from the SD card. Keep in mind, some larger and more complex GIF might not play smoothly due to processing limitations, but simpler GIF will work perfectly. And of course, you can easily add your own GIF. Just place them in the same GIF folder on the SD card. And if you're adding more than 20 files, just increase this Mac files value accordingly in the code. If you enjoy these videos and want to support my channel, consider buy me a coffee. There's a link in the description below. Every coffee really helps me create more tutorials like this one. Thanks for your support. Now let's move on and use the audio amplifier built into the board by setting up an AVI player project. The board includes a very small connector designed for attaching a speaker. But unfortunately, neither the cable nor the speaker came included in the package I received. So I ordered a pack of the small 1.25 mm connector cables. Check the link in the description below. I also picked up the small speaker on Amazon. Simply solder the connector wires to the speaker. Then carefully plug the connector into the board's audio port. Now let's download the AVI player project from my GitHub repository linked in the video description. Extract the zip file and remove the dash main part from the folder name. Open the project folder and locate the SD content directory. Inside, you'll find an AVI folder containing some Creative Commons licensed sample AVI files that I've resized specifically for this display. Just copy the entire AVI folder onto your formatted SD card. Now double click on the sketch file to open it in the Arduino IDE. By now, we've already installed ESP32 from Espressif, the dev device pins, JFX library for Arduino, and the touch controller library. Now, for this project, we need to manually install two additional libraries from zip files. Click on this link. This will get you to the AVI lib library on GitHub. Download the library as zip. To install it, open the sketch menu in the Arduino IDE, then select Include Library and Add Zip Library. Choose the AVI lib zip file you just downloaded, and the Arduino IDE will install it. Next, Click on this link. This will get you to the Libelix library on GitHub. 
download the library as zip, then install it with the Arduino IDE as a zip file. Now click the arrow to compile and upload the code. Again, be patient as this may take a few minutes. Once uploaded, you'll see a simple interface, similar to our animated GIF project, that allows you to select and play AVI files directly from the SD card. The performance of this board is truly impressive, Playing AVI movies with synchronized audio smoothly on ESP32 is amazing, and this was actually my first successful attempt at doing it. You can add your own AVI videos to the SD card, but first, you'll need to convert them into the correct format for playback. Download and install the FFmpeg software. I've included a link in the video description. Download the zip file and extract it. FFmpeg is a command line utility, so after extracting, navigate into the bin folder, right click inside it, and select open in terminal. Go back to the Arduino IDE and open the included readme file, where I've provided the exact command line example you need to use with FFmpeg. Keep these options as they are, otherwise the AVI file produced will not play on the board. You specified here the movie that you want to convert to AVI. You can adjust the quality and frame rate parameters to fine-tune playback smoothness. Here the movie will be scaled to the size of the display of the board, so do not change it. And here you can specify the converted movie file name, make sure it ends with a .avi extension. Note that converting videos may take a long time, especially for longer clips. I recommend starting with short videos around 10 seconds before processing longer footage. LVGL is a powerful library for building professional and attractive user interfaces. Let's get you started first with a simple example, and after that, we'll jump into a more advanced project. Download the LVGL9 starter project from my GitHub repository. Check the video description for the link. Extract it, and remove the dash main portion from the folder name. Then, open the folder and double-click the sketch file to launch the Arduino IDE. We've already installed the ESP32 board, as well as the dev device pins, GFX library for Arduino, and the touch controller library. If you've missed these installations, revisit the previous chapters for guidance. We need to install the LVGL library, so go to the library manager and search for LVGL, and install version 9.2.2. .2. Now we have to configure LVGL properly. Go to your Arduino libraries folder, by default, it is in your Documents folder inside the Arduino folder. Open the Libraries folder and go inside the LVGL folder. Copy this CON file and paste it in the Libraries main folder. Now rename this file to lv underscore conf dot h. LVGL uses this file for configuration settings at compile time. Open this file with Notepad, and change 0 here to a 1 to enable the content of the configuration file. Now search for theme. Personally, I prefer the dark mode, so I change the theme setting from 0 to 1. If you prefer the light mode, you can leave this at 0. Next, search for LVUse OS, and here, copy LVOS FreeRTOS to leverage the SP32's multi-core capabilities. And finally, search for fonts. If you'd like to enable additional font sizes besides the default 14, simply change their corresponding values from 0 to 1. Now, we are ready to compile and upload the code. This first LVGL demonstration serves as an introduction to get you comfortable with the library. Now that we have LVGL set up and working, Let's move on to building our live internet radio app. Download it from my GitHub repository, open the project folder, and rename the file secretsrename.h to secrets.h. Open this file in Notepad and enter your Wi-Fi network's SSID and password. After that, open the SD content directory. Inside, you'll find the radio.json file, which contains a list of internet radio stations. Simply copy this file onto your formatted SD card. Now double-click on the sketch file to open it in the Arduino IDE. Now we need to install the Arduino JSON library. 
go to the library manager and search for Arduino JSON and install version 7.3.1. Then search for ESP32 Audio I2S and install version 3.0.13. Now we are ready to compile and upload the code. This is a fun application that demonstrates the impressive capabilities of ODSP32 and the LVGL framework. Feel free to explore and customize the user interface using the LVGL documentation. There's plenty of room to create some really cool and functional design on this display. If you want to add other radio station, just edit the radio JSON file and add as many radio station URL as you want. You may have to increase the memory here and the max radio source here. You've now mastered using the GC4827W543 board from analyzing Wi-Fi networks, playing animation and videos, to building your own live internet radio app. I hope this tutorial has inspired you to create even more amazing projects. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. It truly helps support the channel and lets me create more tutorials like this one. If you'd like to support me directly, you can always buy me a coffee using the link in the description below. I deeply appreciate every single one. Thanks again for watching.